Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, October 26, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. The first story is sort of a, well, what took them so long, a kind of a story. GitHub actions are apparently used to mine crypto coins. Security company Sysdic wrote up this campaign that they're calling a purple urchin. As this is, well, a pretty obvious abuse of free computer resources, Sysdic writes that many providers implemented CAPTCHAs and other countermeasures to make it, well, just uh, too painful, really, to abuse the free but uh, limited uh, resources. Purple Urchin highly automates their attack using GitHub, Heroku, and the buddy other three services they're using. And then they essentially open thousands of accounts. They have about 130 different Docker images that they use then to run actions in GitHub, which will allow Purple Urchin to use about 33 hours a month of free compute time from GitHub. Now, of course, the compute resource you get within these 33 hours are limited and, well, uh, but the way they make it still work for them is by highly automating everything. They have like an image, a Docker image that sort of serves as, as a command control server. It also proxies all of the mining pool connections via that command and control server. But the lesson overall is that sadly, if you offer free resources, yes, they're going to get abused, then you probably need to be ready for that. CISA and the FBI are warning about a ransomware group that uh, they're calling the Daxin team, if I pronounce this uh, correctly. This group appears to be targeting healthcare providers and initial access happens via VPN servers, via previously compromised credentials. So either they already found them uh, being publicly used, so essentially credential stuffing. They also appear to be doing some phishing of their own in order to collect these credentials. Well, yet again, a good reminder, multi-factor authentication for a VPN should uh, certainly be sort of a minimum requirement at uh, this point. Once inside the network, they're using uh, SSH and RDP to move laterally. They also often go after VMware ESXi servers that they find exposed and accessible to them. Data exfiltration as so often uses a cloud service. Here in this case, they picked NCROC, which of course of a free API testing a web service, yet another free web service that often gets abused. And talking about uh, VPNs, well, in this case, more VPN clients, uh, Cisco today warned that two older Cisco AnyConnect vulnerabilities, uh, now these are CVE 2020, 3433, and CVE 2020, 3153, are currently uh, being exploited. Patches, of course, have been available for about uh, two years, but warning of active exploitation should uh, probably make you double check that your software is up to date. The particular vulnerabilities here are based of a DLL uh, injection vulnerability, also some directory traversal vulnerabilities that require that the attacker first has access to the system, but uh, then they can use this vulnerability to elevate privileges uh, to system and uh, well uh, and further uh, compromise the victim. In early August, a uh, vulnerability in SQLite uh, was uh, patched that does allow for arbitrary uh, code execution. SQLite, of course, is used in many, many different products, often embedded. And of course, it's one of those things you often don't necessarily maybe aware that you're using the SQLite uh, library as part of a project. Now uh, we do have, thanks to Trail of Bits, uh, more details of this, about this vulnerability, in particular proof of concept exploits. The vulnerability is triggered by passing large strings to the SQLite printf function. Now, uh, 
the vulnerability is triggered if your format string contains either lower or uppercase percent Q or percent W. By default, like if you just use uh, these uh, type of format strings, it only results in a denial of service. But if in addition to that, you're using the explanation mark, uh, so you're enabling Unicode processing, well, uh, that's then when the code execution vulnerability may be uh, triggered. Again, the Trail of Bits blog contains lots of additional uh, details about this vulnerability, including a uh, proof of concept code. SQLite uh, will be really hard to track down on the Linux side. You should already have uh, updated packages available. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.